Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica and I'm so glad that you are here for today's small business video because today we are talking all about product photos. All right, you guys, so as small business owners, we obviously are gonna have to take product photos at some point if you're selling any type of product, whether you're on social media, whether you're taking product photos for your own website, or maybe you sell on Etsy or your Facebook groups or whatever, you're gonna need to take product photos in order to sell your product. But I wanna start off by saying you do not need an expensive professional camera in order to take good product photos. You can absolutely 100% only use your smartphone to take your product photos and they will still come out amazing. Take it from someone that has multiple professional cameras and I still choose to take my product photos with my smartphone to this day for both of my small businesses. So with all of that being said, I'm going to show you guys how I take my product photos on my phone and I'm also going to be showing all of the things that I use and do to level up my product photos. And obviously I'm also going to share just some basic tips and tricks with you all. So let's Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so tip number one to achieving the best product photos, in my opinion, is completely dependent on what lighting you're using. So I have quite the lighting equipment collection. These are just two that I have in here right now that I'm using to film this video currently, but I also have some of the light boxes that are on like tripods downstairs that I also use all the time for my product photos. But I think my favorite lighting is this ring light. They have a ton of different options on Amazon. I just like how adjustable this one is and it also has like different variations. Like I can change it to a more like bright white or a more like yellow light. I can change the brightness or dim it down if I want to. And it also came with this like little mount here that I can put my phone on which is perfect for when I'm filming reels or TikToks for my social media of some of my products. But if you're not even trying to spend any money on your lighting setup, then I definitely recommend that you check out some of these mini ring lights on Amazon. I got this one on there and it's like a little clip on so I can clip it anywhere I want, but usually I clip it right on my phone. So when I normally take product photos, I clip it on just like this. So it's right next to my camera but I like this one because it's not battery operated, it's rechargeable and it has three different settings. So it has like this mixed one, which is the one that I use most of the time because it is the brightest and best looking light in my opinion, but I could also change it to bright white or like a yellow light. And you will be amazed at just how much this will improve your product photos tremendously. But if you're trying to spend zero dollars on your lighting setup, then I also recommend that you try to take as many product photos as you can with natural lighting, whether you're setting up something right in front of a window to catch that natural light, or you take your whole setup outside maybe, if you can. Nothing quite beats that bright natural light that you get from the sun, obviously weather permitting. Tip number two, for your product photos is get creative with your backdrops. So I have taken product photos on this contact paper that I got from the Dollar Tree, I might add, and you could cover an entire area in this contact paper and it looks just like real marble. This would be a great backdrop, especially because it's like a bright white. So it's really gonna be reflective and that light is gonna bounce off of there, making your product look amazing. And I also recommend checking out some poster board. I got this pretty one from Hobby Lobby. It looks just like white shiplap. So I use this backdrop all the time for my product photos, but I also love to flip it over. So it's kind of like a two for, you're getting two for one. And I will use the blank white plain side to also take my product photos. I believe this was like $2.99 at Hobby Lobby, but sometimes they have a sale on them. So be on the lookout and get yours on sale. Hobby Lobby and Michaels also have a section that is, I would call it like the teacher aisle, but it has like like bulletin board, like borders and backgrounds and paper. And they have a ton of options that you could also use for your backdrops that are larger options. Let's say you have like a boutique and you take a lot of like outfit pictures, you're obviously gonna need a bigger backdrop than a poster. So then I would recommend checking out that teacher aisle at Hobby Lobby or Michaels where you can get a super large backdrop, cut it down to whatever size you need or don't cut it down at all 
and take your pictures on that. I've also used tablecloths, curtains, sheets, and blankets as backdrops. Or let's say I'm taking a picture of a bunch of like cute Western stuff. I would set my stuff right on my cowhide rug and take pictures of it. Or if you have like super nice hardwood floors, use those. I also recommend checking out at Hobby Lobby and Michaels the scrapbooking aisles where you can get like these large pieces of paper. They have them like in regular sizes too, but these are 12 by 12 inches, I believe. Um, and these would make amazing backdrops if you have a small product that you can put on here. Like this one would look great for like a summer photo shoot that you're using for a product. Here's a regular piece of paper that looks like shiplap barn wood, but it's painted red, white, and blue. They have gorgeous patterned ones. This would be another good one for summer. They have these ones that are covered in glitter. This would be a gorgeous backdrop. Or you could just get colored pieces, whatever colors you want. I like to get the bright ones because I think they look really cool. But you could certainly get any color you wanted that would look good with that product. Or you could go with your business's color scheme so that your branding is cohesive even in your product photos. So my next tip is to stage your product photos like you are a professional product photographer and use props. Okay, and let's say I'm trying to sell you this cute little journal. Like I have a small business that's like stationary stuff and office supplies or something, okay? So sometimes I like to use like props that just like dress up the product. So like here I have some like floral stems that I got from Dollar Tree. These were all on one stem. I just cut them individually so that I could use them for this. So I just like to kind of dress up the photo. But then sometimes I also like to use props that are kind of like cohesive with the product. So for this one, because it's like stationary, I would use like a marker or like a pen or something and we'll put some like reading glasses or something down. So just like that, that's how I would take that product photo. But I wouldn't just take like one photo and stop here. I would also like take away the florals, move the glasses around, maybe add some like paper clips or binder clips or something, like something else to go with it. You want to show your customers like how you would use your product, how it would look like in its normal setting, right? You're trying to entice them to want it, to want to buy it. The goal is to entice your customer enough to want to buy your product, right? So I like to stage different shots. Okay, so I've removed my poster board and now I have like this marble contact paper. Let's say I'm trying to sell this little like trinket dish coaster whatever you want to call this. I made this in another crafting tutorial, but um, let's pretend we're selling this. I would stage this like maybe some glasses. Maybe if you're advertising this as a coaster, I would put a drink on it just to like show it being used. Or if you're advertising as a trinket dish or both, you know, put some little trinkets in there and take a picture like that. Show it being used. You're trying to entice the customer to want to buy your product. All right, let's be more realistic. Let's say I'm trying to sell this freshie because I'm always making and selling freshies. I would stage this like multiple ways. Number one, I would take plain photos and also be sure to take different angles. That's like my next tip is don't just take one shot up above. Like you wanna take like a nice like aerial shot. You wanna take a more like zoomed in shot. But then I like to set up like my phone or my camera like this and like maybe I'll zoom in or and it's okay if it's a little bit cut off. My point of this angle is to like show them the different glitters, the texture, the detail. You want to show them different angles so that they really know what they're getting. There's no false advertisement. And obviously your product probably speaks better for itself like in person. It's kind of hard to pick up all their nice pretty details and see how gorgeous this glitter is over a picture. So you do want to get like those up close shots to really get those details shown but also use some props. So like I would put this disco ball here. Maybe I would prop my freshie against it and then take a picture like that. That looks really cool. Or just set it next to it and just kind of get the corner of the disco ball in this picture. <laughs> for anyone asking, I got this disco ball at five below for five bucks. So you can't beat that. It's like six inches. It is like, obviously you get what you pay for. You can clearly see like a styrofoam ball under there and they just like glued on the little mirrored pieces. But you know, I just use this as like a photo prop, so it's fine. All right, so let me show you another freshy product photo that I would do. So here's um, some glitter card stock with a different glitter car freshy. So it kind of is cohesive, but that bright white really makes the light bounce off, but it's also really eye-catching. So no matter what angle you're at, 
the photo is going to catch the customer's eye. However, if you're doing like a themed photo shoot, you could also use like some different types of props like confetti or glitter or whatever you wanted. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's just like little paper confetti smiley faces, but they go perfect with this smiley face freshie. So I would like take these and kind of just like spread them all out to get a really cool like backdrop. And I actually have a ton of like smiley face freshies. So I would go as far as to say I could use like this backdrop for like all of those smiley face freshies or if they just go with this like confetti, I would go ahead and go for it. Like while you have it all out and set up, take as many product photos with that said backdrop as you can. Not only that, but then your product photos also look cohesive because they all kind of like match and go together. But look how adorable that is and the freshie is still the star of the show. Okay, and then if I was selling a t-shirt, you guys have seen me do this in like a vlog before I think, but I put my t-shirts on my cowhide rug. I might like twist the bottom, like make a cute little knot or something. But I would also like maybe layer it with like a pair of like jeans or shoes or something that would like match the shirt. We could also like use those florals again and layer them on here if we were doing like a close up of the design. But I would totally layer this with accessories, maybe change the backdrop. Like I said, if you have hardwood floors or something. And also if you sell clothing, I would definitely be modeling your own clothes and pictures if you're not comfortable being in front of the camera stay behind the camera and ask like a family or friend to help you model some clothing when i first first started selling t-shirts like back in like 2019 i had a handful of girls and i just had them model some t-shirts for some pictures for me and i let them choose a t-shirt to keep as like a payment but i would highly recommend if you sell clothing have someone model your clothing because if you were buying clothing online i don't know about you guys but i personally want to know what it looks like not on a mannequin not on the floor like on a real person so use models when you can okay so now let me show you guys like real time how i would take this product photo so majority of the time i have my ratio set to one by one because usually i'm posting product photos directly on my website as the actual product photo but then also i'll use the one by one photos on Instagram posts, like regular Instagram posts, but you could obviously change the ratio back to regular, the 16 by nine, and take a photo like that and then crop it if you needed to. But this is how I do it. So first of all, I have a Samsung Android. I don't have an iPhone, so it will look a little bit different on your phone if you have an iPhone. But I would take one aerial shot that's about right there. And if I tap my screen, I can change the brightness. So that's nice. I automatically kind of boost the brightness just a little bit over halfway. You don't want to wash out your entire product photo, so just be careful how bright you are making it. And because I'm using good lighting, I do not need to use flash. So I'm just gonna take one photo like this. And then like I said, I'll do like another close up over here so they get like a better view of like the glitter and the details. Okay, and then from there you can go into your gallery and I believe like iPhone has like basically the same stuff as the Android. But here you can go through and edit your photos. So if you wanted to add like a filter or something, I personally don't recommend filters unless it is very like true to the actual colors of the product. Because most of the time those filters are kind of like color tinted or whatever. So you just need to be careful. You do not want to over edit your photo to the point that it's not gonna look like the original product. So I normally don't ever do like filters on mine. I normally change like the light balance the brightness a little bit sometimes you can change the exposure to like make the whole thing brighter I don't really need to do that for this photo you can up the contrast if you need to saturation if you want to boost the color just a tiny bit again you want to stay true to the colors but I do feel like you aren't getting the real colors over the camera so I just boost the saturation a tiny bit it still looks just like the original freshie and then I always go through to the sharpness and then I'll boost the sharpness up it just makes it a little more like crisp and detailed and I think makes the picture look like a little bit better quality. And then I will also boost the definition up a little bit. So then from there, I will save my photo. And that is a good looking product photo, isn't it? And from there, sometimes I will open up my Canva app. Sometimes I'll edit my photos in there, but sometimes I just go on there to like remove the background. I'm not sure if you have to have like the Canva Pro account, but I do highly, highly recommend Canva for any small business owner. I use this app literally every day 
okay for my small business but I'm just gonna import this photo here so like let's say I wanted to remove that background let's say I wasn't happy with like the backdrop and I just wanted that little product photo with a disco ball so I would add this to my Canva app and start editing it in here and then I'll just go to effects down here and you could also use this on your computer if you didn't want to do it on your phone I just find it super super handy on your phone but I'm just gonna hit background remover and watch this. Okay, so as you can see, it tried to remove the disco ball. I actually wanted to keep the disco ball. So I'm gonna go to the little setting thing and I'm gonna hit restore where you can manually paint in with your finger like what you're wanting to keep in your photo or you can erase whatever you don't wanna keep. So you can see like the little tail of the string right there. So I'm just gonna zoom in and I have the little eraser tool on and I'm just gonna erase that with my finger because I don't like the way that looks. And voila, now the background is off and we just have our little disco ball. And you could also take it a step further let's say i didn't like that backdrop but i actually really want a backdrop so then you can just like go to photos or elements and pick something that you want like let's say i want this background i'm just picking a random one i'm just going to blow that up to the whole size of the canvas so then voila we've taken off the background and we've added our own on canva and there are a ton of options on here so like if you didn't want to go out and buy the contact paper or the poster board you could find any photo that you wanted and use as a background image on canva if you wanted to so i definitely can't recommend this app enough and this is not a sponsored video whatsoever that is how much I love Canva but again you do not need Canva to edit your product photos I think the photos that I took right on my phone and edited right within the camera app came out amazing and work just as fine all right y'all well that's where I'm gonna leave you guys today as always I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did if you did like it please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop a comment down below I would love to hear what you guys think and and if you're watching this video but you're not already subscribed to my channel then make sure you click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future videos i would greatly appreciate the follow thanks for watching i'll catch you guys next time